allow me to make my case. Politics in this country has never degenerated further, with the journalists of today becoming little more than a gaggle of glorified town criers marshalled by network presenters that are becoming nothing more than finely dressed Judas goats. It has become impossible to know or even understand what is going on and who ultimately has your interests at heart. All too few people can afford the luxury of obsessing over politics anymore. There used to be a time when Australians felt pride in our nation, rather than now when people find more pride over which suburb they live in. I am neither journalist nor goat. I am part of no party and work for no organisation. So I hope you will give my beliefs some credence. What is a political argument these days? Two people haltingly stating some murkily recalled statistic to prove their point. Everyone's always angling to show up and drop a brain-exploding fact into an argument like a cat with its latest trophy on your carpet. How can anyone prove anything to anybody when all we have to grasp at are half-remembered and poorly understood little factlets? After all this, the question might be, what are the Liberals proposing? But that's the thing, they're Liberals. They don't believe in doing anything. The core philosophy of Liberalism is privatising everything and hoping someone else can do a better job than the government. The sneaky truth? It largely works. Could you imagine a government-run cafe? Lean back and let people figure it out for themselves works for most things. It's why Labour championed it in the 80s under Hawke and Keating. But there are too many problems in the world today that have been festering for 30 years. Like a bag of prawn heads secreted in the green bin. Too many issues that people on their own aren't fixing. Having enough money to live on is getting harder. Housing is getting worse. The world is getting worse. The planet inches ever closer to a third world war and Australia just squats here with its shoelaces tied together looking lost. We need to come together behind leaders with a vision for the future and plans to confront these problems. We cannot continue to just muddle on through, hoping for things to fix themselves. All of human history is a long, sad story of all the people who couldn't work together being dominated by the people who could. I would ask you then to take deep stock of your own mind. How much of your thoughts are your own, are your observations about the world based on your knowledge of the world, compared to how many are the opinions of journalists whom the country increasingly despise, carefully fed to us all to make us apathetic and despondent about the whole of politics and anything to do with it. We are not the United States, despite what some people think. There are not two indistinguishable parties. In the US, Democrats and Republicans have been in and out every eight years since 1776. But in the last 30 years, in our country, the only time Labour has had a majority government was in 2007. With that majority, they stopped the global financial crisis and shielded Australia from a depression, the one that wiped out the rest of the world. They have never had a majority since then. If you do not have a majority, nothing can be done. It is facile saying Labour's the same as the Liberals when Labour has only had a majority for three of the last 30 years. I would like to now argue why we need just that. A lot of the campaign is centred on different issues, but I want to focus on three. Education, defence and corruption. The future, the now and the past. Education is the only way Australia can remain as a first world country. Funding TAFE, funding schools, people leaving school well taught enough that they can actually pass the university requirements to become doctors, engineers and scientists. All of this starts with the teaching workforce. If you don't pay the profession properly, no one you want to be teaching will do it. Every single one of us can remember being stuck in a classroom with a teacher who hated their job, who resented their students and barely mustered the enthusiasm to complete a lesson. And everyone can also remember a teacher whose passion, charisma and talent made you care and try at even the most tedious of subjects. Since the Liberals have been elected, Australia has been backsliding to become the 39th worst educated in the world. 
We are the 13th richest country. We should be the 13th best educated. At a minimum, Labor has always funded and bettered education. The Liberals have always gutted and ruined it. Now I said I wanted to talk about the big issues. Whenever big issues are discussed, the question always becomes, with gut-wrenching certainty, how can Labor pay for all these wonderful ideas? As if anyone here is going to sit down for 10 full work weeks analysing budget propositions. The people who care do read these things. Famously, John Howard did his sums wrong for his budget whilst in opposition and was humiliated for it by Keating in the press. It lost the Liberals the election. The Liberal Party has read Labour's proposals front to back. If Albanese did his sums wrong, he would have resigned in disgrace already. And whilst a lie can run around the world before the truth can get its boots on, so too does the lie of higher taxes. The Labour party has been the lowest taxing government in the country. The Liberals habitually raise higher taxes and deliver worse services. The ultimate goal of education is a qualified and skilled workforce. The future is not going to be millions of peons mass producing cheap plastic junk. It will be an extremely specialised, highly complicated work. Young people need trades and qualifications for the future, not to lose decades of their lives funnelled into arts degrees and pouring beers in bars. Young people today have no hope for the future and no hope they can even make a life for themselves, let alone one they could bring children into. Without a Herculean effort, millions of people in this country will become obsolete. Automation, robotic mining equipment and driverless cars will cut off the resource wealth we have all basked in. If Gina Reinhart only has to employ a hundred people to keep her minds running, then they will be the only ones left working. This is the CCP's HN-3 cruise missile. It has a range of 3,000 kilometers with a payload of half a ton. It can be fitted with both an explosive and nuclear warhead. Fired from the Solomon Islands, it is in striking distance of all of the Northern Territory, all of Queensland, Sydney and Canberra, within striking distance of every dock, airfield and barracks on the eastern coast of Australia. In the spate of an afternoon, half of our defence force could be destroyed. This is why the Solomon Islands matter. This is why foreign aid matters. That is why this is the single biggest strategic disaster since the surrender of Singapore. All of this, the tenure of Dutton and Morrison. The ABC's Pacific broadcast that was gutted matters. What would you think about the war in Ukraine if you only got Russian news? The CCP is spending billions to build a global media empire for that very reason. To pull Pacific nations into their sphere of influence out of the Western one. Radio Australia has been there for 80 years. It costs peanuts to maintain. But bean counting liberals who don't understand how anything works or what it does just tear out funding like a day labourer tearing out funny looking cables in an electrical pit, blacking out the whole neighbourhood. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of the cure. The Liberal and Labour Party have the same goal against the CCP, containment. The difference between each party is in their competence at achieving that. Wars only start for two reasons. Because one side thinks it will be an easy victory, or because one side thinks it has no other choice. In the coming years, Australia must chart the course with China between those two points. A porcupine does not need to kill a lion. It just has to make the fight not worth the effort. How can we accomplish that? Diplomacy intelligent and long-sighted leadership, countering and containing China, not starting international pissing competitions at the UN, not humiliating the French after they commit a carrier group to patrol the Pacific. The Americans only keep four carrier groups to patrol here. In an environment where the CCP has a larger shipbuilding capacity than the US did at the height of World War II, an extra carrier group from the French was a game changer, lacking the brain cell 
cells to rub together to even bother letting the French know ahead of time about cancelling the submarine deal. When you quit a job, you give two weeks notice as a mark of basic respect. You don't just stop showing up one day. You have to be two and you have to behave in line and consistently with this value. You think he lied to you? I don't think, I know. A century ago, 53,000 Australians died in the fields of Flanders defending France. The French have never forgotten that. Perhaps if Morrison had spent more time listening to the dawn service, instead of playing on his phone, he might have known that. Left in power, what other allies will he cost us? The Liberals have been treating defence like a red-headed stepchild. There have been six different defence ministers in nine years, only to settle on Peter Dutton. If these three clowns had not spent their time standing in Pacific Nation's very halls of Parliament, sniggering about the islanders' homes sinking beneath the waves, we might have our neighbours' respect. <laughs> there is not a single islander alive who has not seen that video and rest assured that the CCP will work tirelessly to make sure they never forget it. A state cannot afford leaders who can only talk of strength as they act with weakness. Labour guided us through the First World War and the Second, whereas the Liberals guided us into Vietnam and Iraq. Incompetence is not treason, but it is just as devastating to the state. Corruption is the death of nations. It is the slow knife that cuts the deepest. For the last 12,000 years of human civilization, from the fall of Athens to the destruction of Rome to the collapse of every Chinese dynasty, the cause rhymes like poetry. Leaders of nations came to wield power solely as a tool to enrich themselves and their friends. We have now at the polls the once in a civilizational chance to enshrine in law a bulwark against this cancer of society. The Labour Party is going to create ICAC to stop politicians from using their position to enrich themselves and their benefactors. On live television, Scott Morrison outright refuses to do it. He won't even pretend to promise to do it. Never seen corrupt conduct, Scott? Then I don't know why you could possibly oppose ICAC keeping it that way. The Liberal Party has become poison to its very core. The men and women of honour, integrity and wisdom have been sidelined and pushed out, whilst those people with the least compunctions about doing whatever their benefactors ask of them are propelled into power. They have ceased to be the party of business and have become the party of big business. While small businesses were ruined in the pandemic and people's lives were destroyed, untold billions were handed to large corporations, not so that they could stay afloat, but so that that they could turn a profit. A healthy society needs small businesses to be the driver of innovation, needs big businesses to deal in the economies of scale that only they can, and medium-sized businesses to service the gap between the two. A top-heavy corporatocracy where everything is geared towards the desires of gigantic multinationals is teetering on total collapse. The Labour Party is not perfect, has acted out more than its share of distress graces, but it is also the party that is responsible for nigh on every reason Australia is a nation worth living in today. Conservatives are not evil. Progressives were not anointed by Christ to redeem the world. But if the last three years have shown me nothing else, it is how much integrity and honour in a leader matter. Anthony is not a celebrity. He is a statesman. He lisps, he stammers, he gets trivia wrong. But when it really counts, he will do what is right. When push comes to shove, a statesman will stand in the defense of his nation, will stand tall in the capital to give people hope. Volodymyr Zelensky's clarion call rallied the world to Ukraine's side. That is why character matters, and why no country can afford a leader who is morally bankrupt. Hypothetically speaking, you cannot afford to be led by a man who looks like he would panic hoard toilet paper during the second wave of COVID. 
Can Australia survive re-electing a man who, when push came to shove, abandoned it? Who bungled every crisis and who squandered every opportunity? Every time the man was confronted with the ultimate test, he showed you who he really is. He was paid one and a half million dollars for these last three years. If we do not fix our dismal education, we will not have a future. If we continue to bungle defense, we will not have a nation. And if we do not act to excise the cancer that is corruption from this political system, then we will not have a democracy. This nation squanders all of its wealth, its future, its potential, and it should not. I want our politicians to be better than they are, and I wish I could vote for the perfect candidate. But we will never have that so long as nothing constrains them from treating their job as a tool to enrich themselves. There will never be a better chance to force politicians to become accountable to their voters than ICAC. I do not know what you can possibly hold in higher priority than that. But if after listening to all this, you still cannot bring yourself to vote for Labour, then vote Teal, vote Independent. The conservative movement must be completely rebuilt from the outside. It can no longer be reformed from within. Do not vote for populists. You cannot hope for a better country by turning to opportunists preying on people's frustration and apathy at the political process. They are all talk and no action and are just a front for the exact same people responsible for poisoning conservatism today. Dark days are ahead of us. Australia and the world are heading towards recession. Natural disasters are going to become more frequent. The drums of war rumble on the horizon. Australia must turn to the only party with the flawless record of guiding us through the coming storm.